Welcome to the tutorial on the Unlock NLS Exclusive Right to Sell Agreement. This crucial document outlines the terms under which a broker will represent a seller in the sale of a property. As always, check with your broker with any questions about using this form, and remember the use of this form is exclusively for Unlock NLS subscribers. Let's get started. The Exclusive Right to Sell Agreement is a binding contract between a property seller and a real estate broker. It grants the broker the exclusive right to market and sell the property and commits the broker to providing listing services to the seller. Let's dive into the key sections and important legal points under Texas real estate law. First, let's look at the parties involved. This section identifies the seller and the broker, along with their contact information. It's crucial to ensure that all details are accurate. Next, the property section describes the land, improvements, and any accessories included in the sale. If the property is a condominium, you'll need to use a condo addendum. The Texas Realtors condo addendum will work with this agreement if you prefer that form. In the listing price section, the seller sets the price at which they want to market the property. This is the starting point for marketing the property. The term section specifies the duration of the agreement. It's important to note the start and end dates clearly. This section includes the ability to terminate the agreement. If you do not have a firm ending date, you're in violation of the Texas Real Estate Licensing Act. All agreements must have a firm termination or ending date. You can always renew or extend your contract if your client agrees to it. Automatically renewing agreements are not acceptable under state law, except in the case of management agreements. Now let's focus on the broker's compensation section, which outlines how the listing broker will be paid. It's important to remember compensation is always negotiable and is not set by law or unlock NLS. It's important to transparently walk through the compensation your client is agreeing to. In this agreement, the listing broker's fee does not include compensation for the buyer's broker. The compensation associated with this agreement goes to the seller's broker and the buyer's broker fees are the responsibility of the buyer. Sellers can elect to offer a direct seller contribution or concession to the buyer to help offset the expense of the transaction and their buyer broker fees but may not restrict such an offer exclusively to the payment of the buyer's broker. This direction is made by the seller in Section 10b-6 of this agreement. Section 5, Paragraph E includes other compensation that can be agreed upon. This section includes directions regarding intermediary arrangements, transactions including unrepresented buyers, breach of contract and disclosure related to service provider referral fees. In Section 6G, the county must be listed to make the compensation agreed upon in this form enforceable under Texas law. The Listing Services section discusses the broker's responsibilities, including listing the property on the NLS to enhance the property's visibility to potential buyers, marketing direction related to the display and distribution of the listing on the internet, and showing instructions. Section 7 covers access to the property during the course of the listing. Complete this section according to your seller's direction about how and when they intend to open the home for showings. This section explains how the broker may act as an intermediary if the broker represents both the buyer and seller. This activity is either authorized or not by the seller using this section of the agreement. Texas law requires written consent from both parties for this arrangement. Section 10 relates to the broker's authority to market the property. Section 10b6 is a new addition to this section and is related to the seller-directed contribution to the buyer. In this paragraph, a seller may choose to offer a financial contribution to the buyer's expenses associated with the transaction but again may not be directed to be used for a limited purpose such as only for the use of buyer broker fees. Sections 11 through 13 include special provisions, additional notices related to the broker's authority and limits of liability. Special provisions allow for additional business terms or conditions the parties agree upon and should be completed in accordance with your broker's policies and procedures. Finally, the agreement concludes with the signatures of the seller and the broker, formalizing the contract. Check with your broker on your firm's policies and procedures related to executing agreements on behalf of the broker as a broker's associate. Understanding the exclusive right to sell agreement is vital for a smooth real estate transaction. As a reminder, discuss the use of these forms or any others with your broker to ensure alignment with your firm's policies and procedures. For more information on this form, or if you have any questions, please contact us at support at abor.com.